Alrighty, are you ready? This video is going to show you how to build this little aquaponic system. Just a small little aquaponic system that's about a half a meter wide, a little over a meter long, and well as we'll say a meter and a half high, but that'll depend on how high your veggies. Okay, so we have just a regular 200 litre uh, uh, barrel here, pretty awesome. And I've also got a smaller one over here, I think it's about 70, 70 litre. Wanted to talk predominantly about these 200 litre ones and what our options are. Now, some people will use them as both the fish tank and the grow bed and I'll cut off the top, flip it over and have that happening as a chop and flip system. Not the most ideal, but Hey, it, it does work. There are just a few little pointers I'll make out when we're doing some demonstrations. First of all, you want to make sure what's been in your drum. Okay, you want to know what's been in there. You want to make sure that any of these openings are nicely uh, able to be secured. So they're not loose, they're not damaged or anything like that. And that your drum itself is in good nick. You're going to need... Okay, so we're going to be using the drill with a hole saw on it. It's a small one and a jigsaw. So when you're using power tools, safety glasses. You've got to make sure you're protecting yourself. And take off all jewelry, make sure nothing can actually get caught. And if you're like me, well, I used to have long hair, so pulling it all back and off. To start with, I'm going to drill some corner holes with my hole saw. And I've got, this is the, the hole that's going to be for the area for the fish to be able to see, do everything we want. And on this side, I'm actually going to have a viewing hole, a viewing section. And I'll be putting some perspex on and having that nice and pretty. And while we've got all the power tools out, we're also going to be cutting up this drum into making into a grow bed. So if you remember I said we can cut it straight down the middle that way, that way, and have that as one grow bed on either side, or we can cut it in these two sections here, so top and bottom. This is what I've chosen to do for how I want my setup to be. So now I'm going to get to it. So this is one grow bed, this is the second one, 30 centimetres deep. Again, I'm just drilling the holes so that I can start off my jigsaw. And uh, safety goggles, eh? You'll notice it. So I've actually done the hole on the inside here. So that way I can jigsaw along, the, along that line nice and comfortably. So. And now, we do the jigsaw. Okay, see, 
can see that's going to go nicely and I won't be dipping into any part of the lines here. I'll be able to follow that line really nicely. It does help also if you wedge it into things so you've got a good backing and make sure you know where your cords are. setting up both two, two of them one is flood and drain and one is a constant flow but I wanted to show you I mentioned before that you can lose the structural integrity of the barrels once you cut them and if I had have cut this long ways so cutting the top off right off that would actually start to buckle out there is enough structural integrity in this size so it's not going to move too much but it can if you know if you cut it the other way the other thing We've just gone through and cut it with the jigsaw and you'll see we've got all of these edgings. So we want to make sure that we get that cleaned up. Now, personally I'm a bit of a cheap, cheap skate so I just use the knife. You can buy a deburring tool. It really depends on how much work you're going to do and how comfortable you are with a knife. Sharp object, please be careful. But um, it is, seriously, it is taking, be very careful, finding your way of doing it and cutting off. You just wanted to make sure that you got rid of all sharp edges and all of this little crappy stuff. You can start to see how that now got lovely blue on here. We do not want any of that in our grow bed or our fish tank. So that's what we want to do. We want to go and get that off on my grow bed. And this is the fish tank that we've cut up. So I want to make sure I need all of these edges off here too. I want to make sure it's nice, easy, clean and safe. Okay, so that is my next step. Okay, so this is one of my grow beds that I'm doing and whether or not I choose for this to be a flood and drain or a constant flood, I can use the same type of plumbing for the base. Now, this is just a 90mm cap that I've already put a hole through <laughs> and what that will do, oopsie, that means I can put um, a guard up to make sure that I don't get any gravel or anything like that coming in. So whether or not it's going to be a bell siphon or you're just going to have it as a constant flow, same process. What we will be doing, so this is a 20 metre, sorry 20 metre, 20 mil pipe and fitting that goes into it and I've made sure that I've got an o-ring on it and it will literally go through there and in there. And we'll also have an o-ring underneath but at the moment I've still got to drill a hole but that's going to be how high the water can get up within the grow bed. So you make sure that you put everything in a measure where you would like it to be. Now this is the height that it's going to be. I'm very comfortable with that. I think that was about 20 centimetres. Actually, I think about 23 centimetres in height. So that's okay. Now, where do I want? Where do I want the hole to go? Don't just go drilling a hole. I'm thinking, you can see here how we've got the higher and the lower. We want this to be flat, flush, flush, flat as much as possible. So that is okay because I'm going to have the water coming in here and that is perfect for me. And I can measure that or I can go by how I am. This is hole drill. This is, I've got several different types of hole drills, but this one is 25 mil for this particular hole. Sweet. 
Now we need to get all of this crap off, but you'll see, oopsie, that this will fit nicely and snugly through here, which is exactly what we're wanting. Okay, so where is my knife? That is a very good question, Candy, where is my knife? That lovely cameraman is getting me my very sharp knife. <laughs> And we're just going to take that edging off to make sure that it will have a nice snug fit. We don't want leaks, especially in a weaker part of the system. And that is also fine underneath. Fold up knife, do not leave knife open. This is how simple things can be with a little bit of preparation. So I have the o-ring here but I want it underneath and I'll show you how to make the, the guard what we do want, we want this to be oh my gosh, as tight as I've got silicon on my hands <laughs> tight as possible no, nope, not tight enough keep going you might be able to see that it's almost there a ring and then screwing that in. We want that this whole section to be as tight as possible. Now with the guard we will be having holes in it but at the moment I'm really just wanting to show you the whole plumbing aspect. You'll see that there is a slight little elevation that's because of the o-ring. Now I have and I'll flip it over so I can show you so that will be sitting in here and we'll have the guard on the outside. Now, bear with me. Don't throw that in there because that's been silicon. Okay, so we're wanting to put an o-ring on this side as well and then we have the female component of that and we're screwing this on so we want both of these to be very very tight to prevent leaks that is some of the basic fundamental plumbing of setting up your grow bed we'll be able to show you the rest in the next video. Alright, so this is the guard that I'm in the middle of drilling. When I say guard, this is what common often we pop in the grow bed, a um, little bit of piping in there to stop any of the gravel from getting into the outlet pipe. So we'll have a stand pipe in there that'll be, you know, coming out to the underneath the, the grow bed. But this is just one way of being able to prevent any, um, yeah, any of the gravel getting caught up where it needs to go. Now, I'll be honest, I, this is a 90mm pipe and I normally would be bolting that in with a nut and bolt. Um, but I did see online somewhere, uh, it was Rob, Rob Gray's videos where he screwed it in. So I thought that was a brilliant idea because not everybody can fit their hand in the, the guards at 90mm. So... He suggested uh, three three screws at different places um, and screw it in. So at the moment it's screwed in so that I can finish the drilling. So I'm only halfway, as you can see. I need to continue going all the way around. And we want to keep the top part um, solid. And you'll see that I've got a cap on here. It's a 90 mil cap. This is the size of the hole for the plumbing that I'm using that's going to go through. By keeping the cap on and screwing the cap on, this allows us to make sure that no one can accidentally lift up this pipe, uh, this guard, and then let anyone, you know, let all the clay go in. It's, it's so easily done, so it's a brilliant design. It's not my design, but it is a brilliant design. And as I said, um, whoopsie, the screws definitely make it an awful lot easier. So once I finish the drilling, I'm then going to go around with my 
my knife and get rid of all these sharp edges. And we're wanting to make sure also that we are screwing, sorry not screwing, we are drilling holes in this, the bottom of the cap, but not the complete bottom. This is going to be up flush against the grow bed base. So we will have an O-ring on this side and the fitting coming through, which I shall show in another video. I just wanted to show, this is how we're drilling. You can draw your dots where you want it to be. I'm fairly good at getting it like that. I've been doing it for a long time, but yes, drawing your dots is a good way of doing it. Just make sure that they come off once you're done. Cool, let's keep moving. The, as far as the hole size, I should say, as far as the size of the holes, you just gotta make sure that the you're not doing holes that are too small, because you want water to be able to flow through, and you don't want them too big. So what does that mean? That means find the smallest bits of clay or gravel that you're using and see if that'll fit in the hole. If it fits into the hole, then it needs to be a smaller hole. If it um, doesn't fit in and it just you know presses up against it, then that's a good size. So that's there's no right or wrong, because it will really depend on the shape of your gravel or clay. So just identifying what that shape is, what that size is, and making sure that the hole is smaller. Now, some people do use their electric saw and do uh, and cut lines. It's nice, neat, clean, and um, you know, looks nice. But I don't. Not everybody uses an electric saw. I personally don't, so I'm more than happy to go with the drill, and then just go through. And as I said, take off all these edgy parts because we don't want that to go through the filter. And we don't want that to go to the fish because, you know, the fish start eating that. That can get caught in them, in their digestive tract and all those yucky things. So, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go and continue drilling and get it ready to put in. Alrighty, so we're now putting plumbing into this little row bed for our barrel tonics. Now, when you're wanting to know the size of what you're doing, you do need to make sure that you've got your, your measuring tape and your measure. So we want to have, you know, a little bit of space up here. If you allow for the one centimetre of space where there's no going to be no gravel, and then you allow a couple of centimetres, generally about five centimetres, where it's what we call we have dry gravel, so we don't want that area to get wet, but we want everything else to get wet. Whether that's a flood and drain system or a constant flow system, you do want to have a large wet area, because that's where your bacteria is, so that's your big filter, but you want to have a dry area as well, that way you don't get any algae growing on your grow bed. Okay, so in this particular grow bed, on this side, I'm going to have it just as a constant flow, meaning the water is constantly flowing through and it's going to be constantly flooded, okay? And not every vegetable likes that, but most do, most are fine with that, but some, especially in root crops, don't really like that. Um, and what we've got in here, we'll show you the flood and drain one soon, but we have the guard, and what this is, is this, we pop this around our plumbing, and it stops all of the gravel from getting into our plumbing. So we've got to make, make it and have this ready. So with this particular one, I've just drilled it, just using the largest drill that I had and making sure that none of the clay is going to be able to fit through those particular holes. And I have screwed, and you can see that there's little markings here. So I've identified where each screw hole needs to be. So here we've got three, and here we've got two, and here are the screw holes. It holds it in place so that no one can walk past and go, hey, what does this do? Yank it out, and then it messes up what you're doing. So um, I used to bolt everything in, and I have to give credit. Um, I saw a YouTube of uh, Rob Gray, and he suggested the screwing it in. So yay to him, great thought. Um, so that's what we will be doing. And you can see on the bottom, we've got the cap. This we attach within our plumbing, and we want to make sure it's all worked together so that it doesn't fall out. So how high, and this is our standpipe, I should go into that one first, isn't it? We've got the three parts. You've got your male fitting that will go through the grow bed and we'll screw it at the, at the other end. You have the pipe, and this is a reducer. Um, so this is a 20, I think it's a 20 mil pipe, and it's a 25 to a 20 reducer. This just allows for the water to come into your standpipe quicker. How do I know how high I want it to be? Well. If that's going to be too high, right? Because there's no area for the dry media, is there? This is just telling you. But it's actually going to be sinking down this, this much down into the grow bed. So after we you measure how you want it to, how high you want it to be, this is a 30 centimeter depth, which is what we do recommend for good root structure 
as well as stability and just so you've got enough bacteria within your grow bed happening. You then just go through and you deduct how much it's going to be and this possibly even still be a bit shorter than what it is. But that's okay because we're just demonstrating and we'll grow bed and what you're going to do. You'll see on this particular male fitting I've got an O-ring. Sometimes you can buy them together and sometimes you have to buy them separately. Just making sure you do know to do that. The first step, we've already got, let's move the guard out of the way. We've already got our hole here that we, we drilled, um, which fits in nice and snug. But we've got the O-ring on this side and we'll have an O-ring underneath it as well. So we want to put the guard here and then put our fitting coming in next. But we want to make sure that we've got the O-ring at the bottom. Okay, and you can see I've taken all of the rough edges off so there's no sharp edges here. In fact, I've got a spare O-ring. I think you can't have too many personally. I'm going to pop this back where it was. Screw this into the guard. It's a nice tight fit, which is excellent. And you do want to get it as tight and as low as you can get it because this is what's going to cause the suction happening if you're doing it as a flood and drain. As I don't want any leaks, this is why I'm putting an O-ring on this side. This is the key O-ring, the one on here is an extra. And then we can just screw this into the hole on this side. All right. And I can feel that's gone through. Now I need to move my screws out of here. We have pockets. And we're going to keep the stamp pipe out as well for the minute. Turn I hold that over. And if you're doing it on a big aquaponic system, you're going to have to get underneath it. <laughs> okay, second, or in my case, third, are in here. Helps with the leaks. And then we're screwing, this is the female part on. and tight and what that's doing as I'm putting pressure on both that's screwing it in from underneath as well and that is the outlet so this is where the water is going to be coming in and this is where the water is going to be coming out this is our stand pipe which shows how high it's going to be now that's possibly a centimeter too high so I'm just going to cut off an extra centimetre there to make sure it's not too high. And with the guard, this is where we, we reline up uh, our points, screw these in. And what this does, water will come in here and it will come up and as soon as it hits this reducer, it will flow in there and into the fish tank or into your sump or however you've got your system set up. That is as complicated as it can be or as simple as you want. You can also make this a lot more complicated. So this is for a constant flow setup. Let's have a look at another video and see what we can do about making this into a flood and drain. Okay, so I am using this 150 mil stormwater drain pipe to make my little solid separator so I'm replacing the uh, the, power, the pail that I have. So I've worked out the, the height that I want the holes to be. I've got three holes that I'm drilling at this time. Two down the bottom, so one here, one on this side. So they're the outlet, so the water will be going out on either side with some valves and the water is coming in up the top here. The different fittings, so these valves, what are they? These ones are inline 20 mil, so that's why I've got the hosing nozzle on this side. I've got the tap part so I can adjust the flow rate, which is awesome. And I'll be screwing this into the PVC pipe, and that's a 20 mil uh, joint. The other one for the water to come into is smaller. Uh, it is 13 mil and 13 mil coming up so that's the aquarium hose coming up into it and 15 mil going into the actual pipe so just using the little hole drills that i have the hole saws i've worked out to 
to do the ones with the valves for me. It is 25 mils and that will give me a very nice, very nice hole. And I have tested the holes first to make sure that it is actually the right size. So having the flat surface, now I do have a cap on the bottom of this pipe. It's going to just help hold everything where it needs to be. And very gently. Now, let's take in. any actual pressure to the drill I simply allowed the, the weight of it to do itself and just holding it in place but I do have a shoulder injury so I can definitely feel it again the bottom one right where the hole is where the marker is and letting the drill do the rest there are different types of hole hole saws that you can use when it gets a little bit stuck to make sure that using a nice little blade we take off all of all of the bearing part. We want a nice smooth edge to be able to fit that that in. And just to show you songs in my head, I don't know if it ever happens to you, it certainly happens to me. Twisting it in, putting a little bit of um, plumber's tape on that will keep it nice and firm. So we go all the way in. Now if I was at all worried I could also add a little bit of aquarium grade silicon around here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing the third hole and then I'm going to test it with water to see if I actually do need to do that. I might not need to add um, I might not need to add silicon. Doing using silicon, make sure it's aquarium grade silicon. If I left that fitting in now as I'm continuing to drill, which you know I always do, so I'm switching to the 19 mil now for the smaller hole. If you bang it or it gets caught in some way, that could then pose problems. You just don't want to damage the little fittings, so it's always best to do all the cutting first. But do check it as you're going to make sure it's the right sizes. So this is where the water is going to come in. Same process, just a small old one. There's no valve on this. It's coming straight from the fish tank. I do have a valve in the fish tank that can adjust. There we go. Adjust the pump. That's flood and drain part there. So just trimming off these these edges. Don't cut yourself. You can use a deburring tool. I don't have one. I'm actually using a different knife tool than I normally use. And do it on both sides, making sure that you've got no sharp edges anywhere. Try not to enlarge the hole any larger that was a perfect fit before. If I enlarge it in any way, that's going to cause a problem. Now, my sawing, I actually didn't take off the edges while I was sawing and cutting this off, so I shall do that now. I'm going to get my big file out and file off that end. The one thing this doesn't have is it doesn't have another lid to put on it, so I could buy another cap or I can use a piece of shade cloth or something like that. Just because any water that goes in there will start to get a bit of algae on it. Running things along, that is smooth. Make sure you do clean up the mess after you've made it. We don't want getting into the environment in any way. So this should easily, if you've got the whole size right, 
screw in. And if you've got a bit overzealous and the hole size is a bit big, silicon, aquarium grade silicon works super duper well. Too small, use a hand file. But I do try to avoid those things if at all possible. Now this is feeling a bit... It looks like it's tight, but it kind of feels a bit unstable. And that feels better now that I've done that extra bit of tightening. So we have that now on either side. We have the two valves, which I want to make sure are closed. And we've got the top one in. I still need to glue the bottom in, but before I do that, I want to check and test water. So I'm just putting the inlet part in. We don't want any of it leaking. Okay, but this top one, we really should not have water up at this level. Ideally, the water should be able to stay at approximately this level, so halfway. If you wanted to be pedantic on the inside, you can get some nuts excuse me expression, just screw it in on there and let's see, do I have any what do I have? I normally have stuff everywhere so we will test in front of you and find out if I actually need to silicon so again the valves are closed um, water may come out the bottom right out the bottom because I have not glued that in yeah, that's what I was perfect on wanting to check that. So you can see water is actually coming out from the hole. So I need to silicon around that part. And that's perfectly okay. That is what I wanted to check. I suspected, and I would normally want to do it, but I was wanting to really give you and show you that we can't just assume because that's tight, that will be right. So I need to completely dry that off now silicon especially these two that where the valves are silicon the mess they can't move and it's going to take about 24 hours for aquarium grade silicon to dry and it'll also glue well it's pipe cement um, PVC cement will that's what will hold this cap itself in place though it's an absolute bitch to get off it's on really tight but yeah silicon around that wait 24 hours then I'll be able to switch them over. How cool is that? And that was how easy and quickly that was made. Scrap PVC piping that I got from the plumbing shop. How cool. Okay, so we have our pump here at the moment. We need to understand how pumps do work and we need to make sure that whatever pump you buy, it's got enough pressure to be able to get up as high. So this is called the head height however high you need it to be pumping. So I'm needing this to pump up about a meter, so I had to get a, a higher um, higher flow rate to be able to do that. Now, pumps usually have a couple of components. This is often, there's a filter here, I've taken this part out, just so that it flows a bit more smoothly, but this is one place. They're all pretty much the same components, but they do vary a little bit on how you do it. This pump also is a twist. Now this is a propeller shaft, you want to make sure that you don't break it. It is, oh my god, so easy to break that. And this is the propeller. Every month you'll need to take this out and give it a bit of a wipe down and clean because it gets very, very grubby, very, very grotty. And the same with in here. I have an old toothbrush that I use to clean the inside of the propeller shaft. That's right here, as well as the holes for where it goes. And there's an O-ring that keeps it all together. So popping it all back, twisting it and it's back in place. How awesome is that easy, but you do need to maintain it. Some pumps, like this one, have different, you can adjust the flow rate. I'm going to keep it on maximum and see how that goes. Um, I'm also going to be adding valves throughout the system um, to be able to see where things are at. So at the moment, um, I worked out how, how deep this tank is. And I've just got aquarium piping. This slides on nice and easy. Uh, and we want the T valve here. The T valve means I can add a piece of pipe to go back into the tank. And I can cut that at the level I want. But I will also be adding the valve here. 
so I can adjust if I want to open that or close it more and this pipe will then be going up into my filter which I'm about to do now. Okay so we're at the constant flow and you can just see right it hasn't started to tip over yet we've just been filling it up but I'm wanting to show you the water has come up from those bottom holes and come up into the guard and hit right at the top of that um, standpipe there at the reducer and then it'll be able to go in as soon as it does that it's going to go down 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 and out this plumbing and into the fish tank and um, I've got to put another elbow on here just to make sure that that's okay and um, how cool is that but this water is going to constantly stay at this level so it's right where my my finger is so that means we've got a good five centimeters of dry gravel so from the water edge up to here that will all be dry gravel and all of the rest is going to be wet gravel which is where the bacteria lives how awesome is that i get so excited with these parts so we'll also just show you here this is the filter which hasn't been i don't have any filter media in there yet but the water is coming up from the fish tank from the pump in here up the piping which you can't see to the piping here into the filter it will then drop down, be able to come out that side and that side as soon as I turn that valve on. Oh, how exciting. G'day, g'day. Radio, so we've had this running now. She's been doing great, right balances, and we're about to have that flood and drain one drain out any moment into the fish tank down there. No leaks. By playing with the valves, I've had everything working perfectly. It's now time for me to add the expander clay. And why am I, I haven't also, the other thing I haven't done is I haven't put any of the filter medium in here yet. Just purely because of what I'm about to do now. I'm filling this bin up with water because the clay here, it's dusty, dirty. We've got to give it a really good wash to get all of that, that dirt off, which is really awesome. So because I'm using the town water, tap water to do that, and also to make sure that it, um, gets enough water and it gets saturated and actually <laughs> so this is the expanded clay water that I was showing you that we needed to make sure you clean and it's straight out of the bag and this is why we don't want it in our aquaponic system <laughs> so we need to make sure that we wash it first and then we pop it in our system so that we can get rid of all of that excess <laughs> stuff so this is the um solid waste filter that I popped up here just to catch any waste and you can see I've got that running now to catch up any of the extra dust that might be in the system doesn't seem to be any at the moment I did a good job of washing it all but I just wanted to be able to show you that's why we say wash things first been a few months and everything is growing growing super duper well on my left I have I have some ginger, some oregano, coriander, a little bit of spinach in here, a heap of basil at the back, a heap of spinach at the front, and I even popped a uh, capsicum plant in there to see how it would go. My fishies are doing well. I've got uh, 12 little gold fishies in there, and they're, they're doing really, really well. Not bad. Not bad at all. Right, so now your aquaponic system's built. Hopefully it's looking awesome and to make sure that you've got your bacteria and everything like that happening, or ready for it to happen, because that's what you're up to now. You need to cycle your aquaponic system. That means you need to put bacteria into your aquaponic system and you need to fully colonize it with nitrifying bacteria. Check out the videos. I've got, I've got you covered on that. I've got how to cycle your system. And I've got how to acclimatize your fish, which means how do I add my fish? Now you need to cycle, cycle your aquaponic system. So colonizing this with all of that nitrifying bacteria to make this ecosystem happen, you need to get that happening before you add your fish. No jumping in and adding your fish now. You'll probably end up killing them within a couple of days. They need that nitrifying bacteria, which is what our grow bed does. Our grow bed converts all of the ammonia from the fish waste into fertilizer for the veggies. That's the whole point of our grow bed as a filter. So now that you've got your system built, you need to colonize it with bacteria. Check out the how to cycle your system video. 
And then once it's fully cycled, add your fish. And again, we don't want to just tip our fish in. We want to actually get them used to the environment. So we want to make sure they don't have any thermal shock issues or pH issues. And in case they're sick, we want to do something about that too. So I've got you covered with that video as well. That is on how to add your fish to the aquaponics system. Check the links. And I got you covered with everything here. I can't wait to see some photos of your aquaponic system. Come on, let me see.